Hi, today we will discuss software design principles. These are important when you are implementing or designing a system primarily during the development phase uh, where you have to take some design decisions how your classes, methods, you know, uh, dependencies and everything will be will be structured, right. So these are quite famous principles and you will see that applied in almost every product that you will be building or any software system that you will be building. Uh, but this is even more important if you are uh, giving an interview, right? Like when you are giving an interview, if you are able to apply some of these in the way that you are coding, uh, that is what interviewers look for, right? So let's get started. The first one is dry. Dry means don't repeat yourself which basically means that every piece of knowledge uh, must have a single unambiguous authoritative representation within a system, right? This, this will reduce repetition in, in software patterns, right? Uh, you should replace it with abstractions or, or say use uh, data normalization to avoid redundancy. Uh, for example, say you have a function that calculates the sum of two numbers, right? Later you need to calculate the sum of three numbers. Instead of copying the code and adding a new parameter, you can refactor the original uh, function to take a variable number of arguments, right? That can be done. So basically you are not copying and pasting code and uh, spraying that logic across multiple places. You can make your code uh, design in a way that you don't need to repeat it multiple times, right? The next principle is wet. Wet means waste everyone's time. It's also called uh, write everything twice, right? It's basically uh, an opposite of uh, dry. That means don't repeat yourself. Uh, this is very common in multi-tiered architectures. Like for example, say if you are implementing a multiplication method, right? But instead of using the multiply operator, you decide to write the function in a way where you are adding up the numbers x number of times, right? So you can also achieve multiplication by that, but that is obviously is something that is you are wasting everyone's time or you are um, writing whenever they, there is a possibility, right? That can be avoided. The next is aha pattern, which is avoid hasty abstractions. Uh, this pattern basically assumes that wet and dry, both the solutions will even uh, inevitably create uh, software that is very rigid and difficult to maintain, right? So uh, instead of starting with an abstraction or abstracting uh, for a specific number of duplications or even designing, starting to think about those things even before your software solution has come to place or your design is complete, uh, this pattern basically says that your software should be more flexible and robust, right? So you can apply abstractions only if it is needed and where it is needed, depending on on a need basis, right? The next principle is KISS. You might have noticed that <laughs> this is also one of our taglines. So KISS means uh, keep it simple stupid, right? Uh, this basically means that systems work best if they are kept simple, right? Uh, I've seen many engineers who unnecessary, uh, unnecessarily complicate a simple problem. Like when, when there is a conditional uh, scenario where you have to write say few if conditions, they'll propose a rule engine, right? Or say you have to maintain the status or something of a, of a class, they'll propose a, a state machine, right? So those are not always needed, right? That is complicating the code. Uh, these type of things should be avoided. And if you are one of the tech leads that is designing, try to avoid this and also try to avoid these unless it is needed, right? Uh, depending on the product that you are building. You don't need a rule engine everywhere. You don't need a state machine in every class that you're writing. So, uh, so you can you can keep them simple. The next principle is Yagni. Yagni means you aren't gonna need it, which basically means that uh, you you can assert that the programmers uh, or developers uh, should only add functionality when it is absolutely necessary and never before that, right? For example, I have seen many times if you are writing a data access layer, right? I mean, something that is talking to the database, right? Folks just go ahead and write a get method, a write method, a save method, right? Um, get by X, get by Y, you have some kind of filters and query mechanism. So a bunch of seven, eight functions in the data access layer, but you don't need those, right? I mean, what is it that you need? If you only need the get and write method, then just be done with two. If you need tomorrow, a uh, uh, an index that needs to be uh, built where you have to do a query by a certain column. You can you can do that when it is needed. You don't need to 
do it because you think that it might be needed in future right so keep a code that is not being used uh, completely away from uh, the software that you are designing the next set of principles are are very important i mean those are called the solid principles you might have heard about those uh, but those are something that i personally almost apply everywhere so uh, the first one is srp which is the single responsibility principle right uh, these are also very similar to i mean very near to object oriented programming principles so whenever you are designing or developing a system you will see these kind of things uh, pop up uh, single responsibility if i talk about in terms of a uh, 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 java for example or a system that you are implementing so this basically means that uh, a class should have only one reason to change right that is it should only have one responsibility right uh, for example say you have a class called order right which is responsible for processing orders for a for a web shop or something right if this class is also responsible for sending emails of orders purchased uh, then it violates the SRP, right? Instead, what you can do is you can create a separate class or a separate service called the email service or email class that can take the responsibility of sending out emails, right? And if that is part of your ordering workflow, you can inject the email class or email service into the order class as a dependency, right? So this principle primarily promotes your separation of concern. Your code is much easier to understand, test and maintain. The next principle is OCP, which is open closed principle. Open closed principle, again, if I talk in terms of object oriented programming, like for example, software entities like uh, classes, modules, like uh, functions uh, should be open for extension, but closed for modification, right? This means that if you are adding, uh, I mean, you should only add new functionality to the software without changing the existing code. Like for example, if I give an example, say if you have a payment processor, right, uh, in your system and uh, which basically processes payments. Uh, now, say if you have to add a new payment method tomorrow or say in, in future, you could create a new class that implements a pay method, right, up as part of the payment uh, uh, interface, right, rather than modifying the payment processor class itself directly, right. Uh, so this way you can add n number of new methods and they can all uh, extend the, the uh, uh, implement the interface that you have written instead of having one class and then changing the logic inside that right every time. So that is the OCP method, OCP principle. The next one is Liskov substitution principle. This is also very critical when you are actually implementing uh, primarily in Java or Python, any object oriented programming, uh, subtypes sh should be uh, substitutable for their base types, right? So this principle ensures that derived classes uh, can be used uh, in place of their base classes without affecting the, the correctness of the program, right? So say, suppose say you have a base class called animal, right? And then a derived class called dog, right? The dog class sh uh, should be substitutable for the animal class, right? Wherever you have the animal, you should be able to replace that with dog if the functionality needs that. Meaning that any code that works with animal should also work with a dog class, right? If a dog class has additional properties or methods that are not part of the animal class, which is the base class, then it violates the LSP principle, right? The next principle is ISP which is interface segregation principle. So your clients, whatever you are writing, whatever software or system that you are writing, there will be clients, right, who will be calling your software. So your clients should not be forced to depend on the interface that they don't use, right. So this, this also principle also promotes you know, creating smaller and very focused interfaces that are easier to understand and maintain, right. So say for example, uh, you have an interface called uh, movable right that has methods for moving forward backward left and right right now you have a class called car uh, that implements movable but only needs to move forward and backward right it would be better to create a separate interface for this functionality say forward backward movable right uh, rather than having the car which only moves forward and backward implement movable which has left and right methods also right instead you can have a forward backward movable interface which only has two methods and car can actually implement that interface right 
the the last one is the dependency inversion principle so this is also very critical like high level modules should not depend on low level modules right so both should depend on abstractions and abstract abstractions uh, should not depend on uh, details right for example say you have a class uh, called database repository or something right uh, that is responsible for interacting with the database now if you want to test this class uh, or test a class that depends on the database repository it would be difficult to do without actually interacting with the database right so instead you could create an interface called database interface right that defines the method for interacting with the database right and have database repository as the main as your source class uh, for implementing the interface and then you could create a separate test database interface which also implements database interface uh, that can be used for providing fake data and for testing right so you can have a test database repository another class so you have one interface called database interface and that is implemented in the source by database repository and in the test by test database repository right so this principle is is basically promoting decoupling and flexibility in your software design right so these are the 10 main software design principles do implement them whenever you are uh, designing a software primarily when you are developing and also look out for those when you have questions in object oriented programming during interviews uh, try to apply these these are things that interviewers look out for hopefully this was useful